Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Photography Live and Uncut, and extremely pleased to invite uh, and welcome, rather, my guest today. Uh, it's uh, Hengi Quanchero from Jakarta in Indonesia. Hengi, welcome to my show. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for having me. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure because I've been following your work on uh, Google Plus and uh, 500px for quite some time now. And, and, uh, your work is amazing. Let me just say that straight off the bat. It is amazing work. Uh, which I just just love. Um, I'd just like to point out to some uh, some to some viewers that Henke is in Jakarta. It's eleven o'clock at night, so that's a great big thank you from us for for joining us at this late hour. He's just come back from a gallery where he's been hanging pictures because he's about to launch. Well, his book has launched, but he's uh, he's got a, a book launching in Jakarta as well. We're going to talk about the book later on. But obviously, my first question is, I just love this question to ask. What was your first camera that you can recollect in your, in your household when you were a little boy, Engi? Aha. Uh -huh. Yes, well, we have to start somewhere, I think. Yeah, we uh, do, yeah. Yeah, it was in my 11th birthday, actually. Uh, my parents uh, gave me a Kodak Pocket. A Kodak Pocket camera? Yeah. It's a, uh, that small uh, rectangular camera. And... Uh, I use that camera uh, basically to document things uh, around my house, uh, especially all the animals, all the guests that was coming to our house. Yeah. And basically, uh, what I want to catch is their uh, uh, expression. I like to get their very natural expression from from all the guests that are coming in, and I like to collect them actually, by the way. And um, oh. just never look back after that. I keep using camera. That's fantastic. So something like a Kodak Instamatic, something like that, or an Instamatic 110, something like that, where the cartridge something goes in like, the back. Yeah, something that you have to cock uh, the camera with your thumb when you want to advance the film. I'm with you, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was in the 70s, I believe, yeah, around the 71 or 72. Yeah, it's yeah, the same I, sort of camera that I started off with, uh, which is which is another story. Right. I, won't, I won't get into that. So, uh, at the age of eleven, then you were very keen on photography, by the sound of things. Indeed, and uh, uh, because of the size of the camera, it, it somehow it sparks your imagination. Yeah. Uh, for 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 a while, I thought I'm James Bond. I was James Bond. So I, I can somehow uh, hide that camera anywhere else just to get that, 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 that perfect expression from, from, from the guests, just to make sure that they're not aware. Yeah, that, exactly. that, that, uh, almost, that almost candid shot rather than the posed shot, yeah? That's right, just like a spy. <laughs> yeah, exactly right, exactly. So whilst you're at school, uh, you continue taking your photographs, but what was your, what was your main interest at school in terms of subject matter? Well... Uh, I, I actually, uh, mostly people photography. Uh, I have a lot of friends. Uh, we have a lot of community. We have a groups actually at school that that like to hang out together and just take just take pictures. But uh, that is the time. I think I think in my uh, senior high school, that was the time when I was exposed to Ansel Adam, uh, because uh, uh, friends of mine, uh, his parents owns uh, some of their books and poster and i think that's the one that changed everything yeah it's, uh, it's interesting how one particular photographer basically catches mm -hmm. catches you and, and you realize something oh this is this is something which i'm really really going to be interested in isn't it that's right it, it's just uh it just transfix you I mean it's just make up your mind that uh this is what i want to do and you yeah. do it uh you, you just have to go to the us i mean uh uh, I graduate from high school, and then of course I don't. Uh, I didn't tell my parents that I want to major in photography because uh, I'm yeah. not sure if they would let me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'll venture to something else first before the real love uh, of photography really show up. And I moved to Brooks Institute of Photography in Santa Barbara. In Santa Barbara, yeah, I read that on your blo on your bio there that uh, you'd study photography in in California, which is well, that's that's quite a trip for you to make. How long were you studying in uh, Santa Barbara for? Uh, it, it was a three and a half years program. So, uh, well, uh, the first one and a half years. Magic is delicious. Oh, did I lost? Don't worry about it. I'll just delete it. Don't worry. Carry on. 
Yeah, so uh, the first ten, one and a half years, you you really learn what the zone system is all about. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, uh, I think that's the one that really, uh, really, uh, I really get my style through zone system. I mean, the the, the ability to do uh, a black and white in your visual. Yeah. You yeah. try to look everything in black and white, like what you said is called a uh, pre-visualization. Yes. So, uh, it, it's still not absolute until now. I think. I think it, people still use it, and I do hope other um, uh, more people use uh, uh, zone system because yeah. it's, it's I think a lot about black and white photography. Yes, indeed. I, I I know exactly where you're coming from. With regard, are we at a stage here when you when you went to Santa Barbara? Are you shooting with digital camera, or are you still shooting with film camera? Uh, that was during the '80s, so uh, we don't so have so. digital. Yeah. yeah, still film so, camera. Uh, yeah. I'm using a regular film, and I also use. Uh, we have to use a four by five uh, format camera. Yeah. Uh, uh, to do uh, like a product shot, so uh, I, I do four by five as well as two and quarter when I was at Brooks Institute. Okay. But mostly I use thirty five mil. Yeah. For, for what, what, using the using the four by five. What what uh, camera were you using there? Was it like a film camera, or were you? Um, uh, Hasselblad is not four by five, is it? That's six by six. No, but, uh, but so uh, medium, medium format, yeah. Yeah. For the uh, for the four by five, I use F one Cina. Right, okay, I've heard actually, of it. Yep. Yeah, I actually Cina Cina camera is not used for outdoor. They're used okay. uh, mainly used to for for a product and for a tabletop kind of shot. Mm -hmm. But uh, well. Uh, that's the only machine I have, so I have to travel along, even when I'm doing landscape with it. It's okay. basically the same thing, it's just a little bit heavier. Yeah. So basically, how many uh, how many years were you uh, on this degree course in Santa Barbara for? It's uh, uh, three years. Three years, it's that's a, right. I mean, you mentioned a before. Bachelor, a bachelor of art uh, uh, program. But you stayed a little bit longer than three years. Well, yeah, you, uh, it's not studying. I mean, you practice, yeah. You keep yeah, practicing, exactly, yeah. practicing. So, I, I, I don't think you will ever stop practicing. I mean, uh, there's always something new that you you, you can uh, encounter and that you can uh, venture to. Okay, so mm. the majority of your work then is basically using medium format. Do you are you using um, a th sort of a thirty-five millimeter equivalent now, or is it still medium format photography? Uh, for film. I use uh, Hasselblad, the 503CWCX. Yep. Uh, that's that's a very old, and I'm using an 80 millimeters lens, uh, the standard lens. Yeah. And uh, uh, I use a lot of long exposure with it. Uh, but most of the time, I use the Nikon. I mean, uh, DSLR is very uh, uh, is very common, and then uh, I love to change black and white actually from color. Yep. You can play with the channel mixer and everything else. You can get a very tailor-made kind of look. Yeah. yeah. I what else? Uh, yeah. I think, yeah. So, uh, interesting point you made there. So, your work now, although you're still using medium, medium format from time to time, you're using a, yep. a Nikon. I assume that's a full-frame Nikon, is it? That's right. The D800E. You're using that's the D800, uh, yeah. And uh, when it comes to your photo processing and your photo editing, um, yeah. Your preference is for Photoshop, or do you use Lightroom or something of that nature? Uh, Lightroom and Nick Software FX, Silver Nick, FX Nick, Pro. Yeah, yeah Nick uh, yeah. is a fantastic program, isn't it, Nick? I, I enjoy yeah, using not, it myself. Not necessarily in, or, in that order. Sometimes, uh, yeah. most of the time, I started with uh, Lightroom. Yes. And then for uh, icing in the cake, and just for the final tuning, I use Nick Software. Yes. Especially, especially if you want to get that film look. Mm. I think. They did a great job. Yes, I, I couldn't agree more with you. The Nick software is is fantastic for all the different options and and sliders that you've got, just to put that finer detail in it. And Lightroom is pretty good as it stands. You know, it it does a fantastic job itself. But just to give mm -hmm. it that little bit of a tweak, uh, Nick software does does that extra bit. Now that from that point of view, do you print your own or do you send that off to a third party to print for you? Well, printing is a totally different animal. So. Uh, I, I give it to the bureau. Yeah, uh, exactly. I give it to my close friend, uh, actually, uh, he's from Brooks as well, so I trust him. Get all the, you know, the the the, the, the digital high res, and then 
uh, I have the privilege to, to go uh, to the printer, sit next to him, yeah. and draft it somehow. So I think I think that's a big plus if you do some printing. So yes, you don't know uh, exactly what you get. Yeah. yeah, I know where you're coming from. There's very few... Um, what I would term, and I've used this term very carefully, top uh, professional photographers that follow the whole thing through from making the making the image in the camera through to printing their work themselves. I think probably Martin Bailey is the is probably the only one that I know off the top of my head is doing his own work. But there is this this old school attitude. My, Ansel Adams is a different kettle of fish, but there's there's still this old school attitude of it's not right to say old school, but I, I think you understand what I'm saying in the terms that. It, the photographer was the photographer and the printer was the printer because the printer knew how the machines work. That's right. The, the key here is uh, it, it's not that easy to simulate what you see in the screen. Yeah. What you see in the screen is, uh, it, it, it's a monitor, the, the light source. Yes, exactly. To your ear, to your, uh, face, uh, to your eyes. Yes. That's why you have more gamut, more detail. But if you print it so that, that the light is a reflection back, exactly. so you have to lose some, some details there. So yeah, the key I, for a print is to come as much close as possible. Very true. It's interesting you make that point, actually, because uh, <clears throat> only just a few days ago, a, a friend of mine was asking me, he wants to start doing printing. And uh, he said, have you got any tips for me? And there's always one tip that I remember Martin Bailey giving me and, and to everyone that watched his workshop, not just me personally, was to turn the brightness down on your computer from normally what we have them at 100%, which is what I've got it now for this show, down to about 25 or 30%. Then do your okay. editing. And then when you do your editing, basically, you're taking the screen away from this backlit, like transparency type viewing that we used to, used to have in the old days with the, with the transparency film. You're creating a darker image on your on your screen, which in actual fact will replicate what you're printing, which, as you say, is reflected light off the print material, isn't it? Yes, that's that's correct. I I, I agree with it. So yeah. So we the monitor, so you the, the bright. Exactly. Uh, there's, there's nothing worse than these bright monitors. Everyone's saying, "Oh, they're fantastic. They're so bright, but they're no good for printing." No, it's so good, too good for printing that. They cannot match. No, yeah. Exactly right. Oh, there's exactly. A, there's a, always a reader, so like a, a monitor reader. But yeah, well, this, uh, if you play with color and well, yes, you can calibrate your screen, obviously. But the, even then, you've got to make sure the brightness is not right, and then you can calibrate your screen to your printer. But again, you've still okay. got to understand the the, the transference from uh, from the print the computer to the printer through its internal, yeah. as they call it, yeah. the rip. This is a good. This is a good little segue, actually, because we can go to um, screen share straight away. Okay. Uh, Nikki. Um, what um, for <clears throat> those that are listening to the show? I'm now going to the screen share, and and really, you must, must, must visit uh, Hengi's website. Um, it's uh, Hengi. That's H E N G K I Quantrero uh, dot com, and uh, go to his gallery site. Before we do that, I just want to. Just give him a quick plug for his book, which is Monohydra. Uh, it's just come out uh, this, well, the back end of last year, by the looks of things, Hengi, yeah, 2015? Yes, yes. And uh, it's available here on um, Amazon for $139. Um, yes, that's and that's the book that you're launching at the moment. Yeah, it, it's a book about underwater. So It's the underwater. So that, would it be a good idea... There's just one other thing which Hengi wanted me to, in actual fact, point out to you. Excuse me wiping down here. There's That's another right. of his books that is available, which That's is right. through, uh, through a German uh, uh, publisher. And that's reasonably priced at uh, around about 15 euros at the time. And this is a, um, a, a soft uh, softback book, which uh, may be worthwhile looking out for. And the link is yeah. on there as well. That's, Gallery. that's my very first book before the Monohydra. Mm -hmm. If you can that's scroll down a little bit, I would like to show you the, the more expensive version of the journal. There you go. This one now, there with the, uh, yeah. The, yeah. yeah. This is a handmade book, by the way. Wow. So everything done in there is done by hand, including the printing is done in the washi paper. Or it's, a, it's a handmade paper from uh, from Sweden. Okay. So, it, so it, it's, it's very special also. So there you basically, go. Basically, that's, yeah, that's, basically that's, it's a retrospective book. So it's like the, the, the best, all my shot is in there. 
Lovely. Yeah. So that's the three main books that uh, Henge's produced. And of course, the latest one is Monohydra. So which in okay. actual fact, I think what we'll do, um, why not, if we can, uh, is this um, panel which I'm clicking on here, is this uh, a link to that gallery for that those particular images? That's correct. This is all the underwater shot, yes. So I this think is... what, what would be a nice idea is let's just have a look about uh, three or four of these images and then show some of your other work. Okay, we'll do. How, how did the project underwater come about? Well, I, I'm a diver. I started diving in 1993. Right. And, uh, it's the best thing to do, I mean, here in Indonesia, because we have uh, 17,000 islands. Yes. And the position of Indonesia is, is, is perfect for, for this underwater biodiversity to, 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 to thin, to, to, I mean, uh, to, to live, yeah? Yes. So we are very lucky to have uh, the Indo-Pacific region in our place, because they're just uh, rich with uh, uh, coral reef and uh, fishes. Uh, very good biodiversity, by bio, marine biodiversity, by the way. Mm -hmm. And I like to shoot uh, a half and half world, and like you see right now, half yes. into the sky and half under the water. So you get a chance to see both world in one frame. Yes. Yeah, the water except uh, also the above, and a lot of uh, soft coral things. Yes. What, so camera, basically, what camera are you using for this type of work then, Hengi? I'm using a very uh, simple camera because uh, the last thing you want to have is a, is a very complex camera. Yeah. I'm using uh, the point and shoot Canon G10. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, what I did is uh, I just bought a, a, an Icolite housing. Yes. It's very complex, very small, so it's easy to, to dive with. So, yes. I'll, I'll prefer that way. And I don't use flash. No. Because, uh, I, like, I like to, to keep it the way it is. Yeah. And this is all zone system too. I mean, uh, I think zone system is just the ability to put where you want to put the spot at zone, in which zone, in yes. order to, to, to deliver the message. And uh, zone system helps me a lot. Like the like like the photo right now here. Yes. Uh, original. This is very ugly. It's very greenish. Right. And, and I just thought that if I put all the the detail in zone eight or zone nine, I think it will look lovely like a lace uh, somehow especially with the details and the background I'm with you. and uh, what I did is just I waited uh, and then used zoom lens for the fish to show up just make sure used to my presence so they won't, won't run away mm -hmm. so so I like I, I like this one a lot the lace one it's, yeah. very, it's very it's a lovely shot a lovely shot and oh, yeah this amazing. is also a hard coral looks like a mouth there yeah, well, actually, I didn't take this to, to, to document uh, the type of coral. It's more like an expression, yes? Yeah, it's that, it's so that. I, document it. I'm, uh, I don't even remember the name of what I shoot. It's just, no. uh, just uh, the, the effect that, that you want to produce. It's an expression. Yeah. That's exactly right. It, it's it, it's a, in, in terms of what, how I look at it, it's a pattern stroke abstract type image of, of this uh, coral. It's amazing. That's correct. Yeah, it's amazing. amazing underwater. That's, uh, they are their art themselves. You know, they're making art themselves. I think and uh, there's a lot of. Yeah, I was gonna just asking a quick question because it came to me. Um, uh, yeah. a, a little story to tell later on, but bearing in mind that I know there are difficulties working underwater with cameras. How? What's the distance from the camera to the subject matter in this particular case? In this particular case, uh, well, since the the subject's not moving, yeah, so I can get as much close uh, as close as possible. Uh, if you cannot, if the if it's a live uh, animal, then you uh, then I suppose you cannot get too close. Sure. Then want to wait a little bit. Just make sure uh, they're used to your presence. And I would use zoom. Yeah. And also a motor drive, just oh, to make okay. sure. I I don't miss any action in there. Yeah. yeah. That's lovely. It's a great uh, insight into your book. Uh, so that's you. great to win. But um, uh, let's have a look at uh, waterscapes. And I've seen quite a few of these images. These are, these, okay. these are well, out of the top drawer. These are amazing. These are amazing yes, yes. images. Tell, tell us about where the areas that these images were taken, please, Henry. Well, uh, this go hand in hand with, uh, with, with the place where I died. 
right. mostly mostly this place is in the eastern part of Indonesia. Okay. Because uh, eastern part known as the deep water, so okay. it, it automatically they give you a better visibility and better plankton, so for a fish to eat. So uh, the fish are teeming there. Yes. So this is most of this place are are, are taken while you're not diving and as you see i did a lot of long exposure most of them are long exposure shot. yeah i can see that i also noticed that all your images are cropped to the same square format um, yeah well, this is this uh, is something obviously from your uh, medium format uh, days yeah actually this is because of michael kena <laughs> oh okay <laughs> yeah well uh, i just fall in love with with, with the way he he, uh, he composed things yeah with yes. his photography uh it give that sense that less is more that that simplicity yes so, uh, and it's uh, more like a, a european style i would say the square format is it, it, it's just more i mean I, I can say it's more prestigious i don't know i might be wrong it, it just looks nice i mean it's just, it's, 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 just, uh, interesting. One side is equal to the other. it's interesting you mention that actually because i am seeing more and more images on on the internet that are square in format that's um, true. They're not portrait, they're not landscape, and yeah, there is, there's definitely a, a, a preference at the moment. I love that one with the umbrella. Um, don't forget, it don't is, forget uh, about yeah. Don't forget about Instagram. If you look at Instagram, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. It's all, all square. Exactly right. Although in, in Instagram, you now can put uh, landscape images, right. but but yeah. it did start off as 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 a square format. Exactly right. Yeah, it's the and also Twitter. Yeah. The full uh, the, the full resolution of the photograph now. Usually yeah. they, they, they crop it like a rectangular style. Now Twitter are showing the the, the, the whole package of the the, the photograph. Fantastic. And Twitter, yeah, is it? Very Twitter good. Very is good not all for photography. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's quite amazing, isn't it? How photography is literally yeah. just well taken off uh, obviously photography has been around now for quite a number of years but this the social right. network that we've we've got that, here is just that, that one is a special one with the feet uh, off. yeah, yeah. Uh, this is actually at the end of the session so everything's finished the the, the first two boys is gone already this is the one yeah left. and actually this is the best shot of the session so it, it teaches you a little bit that uh, don't put your camera on back when you finish. Yeah, very something true. Might happen. <laughs> yeah. So something may happen right at the end. Uh, usually it happens. When <laughs> yeah. And this is my son, by the way. That's your son there, yeah? Yeah, uh, it, it was in the swimming in the swimming pool. Again, right. this is the zone system, I put it in zone two, just to, 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 to make it a little bit dramatic with the water and everything else. So I put it between zone two or three right yeah this is something which i've got to check up on this zone zone system of uh yeah of, uh, yeah working it, it i've i've obviously heard of it and i know that ansel adams was effectively the instigator and the creator of it that's right, but, that's um, right. it is amazing how this I, I love movement in in the photography here this 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 yep. image and the following one is superb yep. i just told her to roll around several yeah. times and then I just keep snapping with the uh, motor drive. Amazing. Super yeah, yeah. Let's go down. Let's just have a quick look at one other. Uh, let's yeah. look at Noir. This is, this is. Yeah. Well, what this zone, is, what uh, zone is this one? Pardon me? What zone is, uh, is this work created from? That is, that is from an airplane. Oh, it right, okay. The There's a river. So I just uh, snap a couple of uh, photographs. Actually, this is not taken at night. It's no. just I, I I put it in zone again. I put it in zone two in zone system. That's so yeah. I, okay. I make everything dark, but uh, beside the, the the river, the the specular highlight of the river. I thought it looks interesting. Yes, it's it, it, it's a uh, that sort of silver yeah. Yeah. type meandering yeah. river there. It's, it's yeah. great. Well, it's a. Uh, you can only see once because uh, when the plane passes, and that's it. That's it. The spectrum oh. highlight disappear. Yeah, exactly. Lovely. Uh, noir is about zone two and zone three kind of photography. It's yeah. all in the, uh, I would say, a low key type of photography. Yeah. And basically, you know that 
uh, which zone you're gonna put it once you 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 practice a lot of zone system yeah it, it will teach you uh, which zone to put it in I mean the, the most perfect way and the most uh, communicative way yeah again that little bit of movement there with those boats That's right. is lovely it, lovely this one is in Bali it might be of Venice of Bali it looks like the, the boat in Venice exactly yeah exactly and this one, I like to talk about this one. Can you go up this, a little bit? Go up this uh, one. One more. Uh, this one. Do you know what that white line in the middle? Uh, you, you no, see white don't. line. Yeah, I don't know what that is. Uh, there's a light leak. Oh, really? I forgot to close uh, the eyepiece of my Nikon. No. So that what happened? Well, look, since you know, look, it, it, it's fantastic. It, it looks as though you've actually created it in the camera deliberately. It's a mistake, obviously. You but must now, never, must never give your I secrets can't. away. Yeah, it, it, it's always in that position. So yeah. next time, if I want to do a certain thing like this, I want to make sure that line is, uh, sits right in the horizon. Yeah. So it, it makes a perfect, uh, what do you call it, a perfect effect for that. Yeah. So a mistake is not always bad. A mis no, very true. Very true. Lily's on the pond there. This uh, yeah. and the uh, breakwater. That's right. And yeah. then the sun coming yeah. through this the pond. I, like this one. So I call this humid. Yes, yeah, so I, I I think that basically uh, let's come out of screen share. Thanks for sharing those images. Absolutely superb. I, I, I'm going to ask you a question here now because you've mentioned it. You put it into zone one, two, or three. How yeah. do you put it into the zone? Well. Uh, there's no rule for that, and I don't think there's a book that teaches it. I just uh, look at Ansel Adam, what, what he does, and start okay. to copy whenever it's possible. Sometimes when I walk around, I said, hey, this is, it, it reminds me of Ansel Adam 3. And in that instant, he put it in zone, zone, zone. So I, I copy, you copy uh, your, your I'm with you. So basically what you're saying is then you go around, you take the photograph, you appreciate the photograph is a zone two or a zone three, and then when you get yeah. it back to your uh, to your office on your computer, you edit it according to that zone. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, basically, the, the simplest way to say is do you want to make it high key or low key? Uh, yeah, that would be the simplest. Yeah. yeah. And of course, you can also play in the middle grain, which is right in the middle. Yeah, sure. And it also works sometimes. Yeah. And what I did is sometimes if I revisit it, uh, a, a photograph that I did a year ago, eh, you might have a different idea. It depends on your mood. And you yeah, might have a that, That's interesting you mentioned that because you mentioned to just before we started the show, Michael Kenner. And I remember talking uh -huh. to Michael about it about his latest book france i think he's done another one since but the the, the book at the yeah. time we were talking about was france and it, and he said that there were some images in there which he took in about 1975 the late 70s and early 80s which he had never printed before and he said of course what i'm taking then and what i'm feeling now with regards to making that print and as you know michael is was a printer that's the difference he was a printer before he was a photographer um, and the feeling comes into what he wants to appreciate in the photograph at the time he's doing the printing, not at the time of when he took the image 20, 30 years before. Okay, okay. That's true. That's true. I mean, the, yeah, the photography, uh, the photograph is alive. It has its soul of its own. And sometimes it, it, it not necessarily you see it in the first time you edit it. Very true. But sometimes, you know, uh, it just come about, and then it's, it's good time to take advantage of that. Yeah, are you, are you are you a photographer that once he's been out and 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 uh, done the work? Are you a photographer that immediately starts to edit the work when you get home, or do you download and leave, as I would term, let them marinate for a little while and then go back to them? Both, actually, uh, I marinate it, especially if I if I have a, a writer's block. If I don't have any yep. idea at all and everything is just blank, I, I would leave it uh, probably a week or so and then revisit it again and come back again. Yeah. And not necessarily one week, sometimes a year. Why not? You know. Yeah. Sometimes, obviously, you get there, you open them up, and you immediately know what the effect that you want to create, and you must start yes. work on it straight away. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. Sometimes. Yes. So let's let's talk, let's talk a little bit more about the book and this exhibition which you're now just starting here. The book who who came up up with the idea of the book? Was it your underworld of photography or did someone suggest to you to uh, to put it together? Well, 
Actually, uh, one of the writer uh, uh, contact me, uh, believe it or not, this is the, the, the magic of uh, social media. Yes. I mean, this would not be happening uh, if not because of the internet. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we are close now. There's no border. It's borderless. So they yeah. just contact me one day through the Facebook, and then we start talking, and then we agree uh, to do a book, with, especially with the first one. Uh, this one is the Fayfile's bookstore from the Germany. Yes. Uh, we just uh, get together and then choose some portfolio, and then we agree to do about 70 photographs. It's more like a retrospective idea, so it's sort of like the best of my photograph that put in together. But mostly, uh, they initiate first. And the choice of the images in the book is that was that down to you one hundred percent, or did you give them a selection for them to choose? I give them freedom to do because um, I've seen it every day. I mean, it's would be better if you get a better point of view, a fresh oh, point of yeah. view. That's a so, good point. So I'll, let, so I'll let them do it for me. Yeah. Yeah, that that's a good point because. Uh, Although you love all your photographs, sometimes it's very, very difficult to edit out the yeah. ones that you want in. I know it's bad enough when you're trying to create a gallery or a portfolio on your website, and you you want to try right. and keep want to try and keep it to twenty images, but you're always around about twenty five, thirty, aren't you? You never know when to stop. <laughs> you're biased. You're biased. You're always plus, biased. Yeah, exactly. And plus, plus, uh, you need a flow when you when you yes. uh, when you have a book. There has to be a story. I mean, you cannot put the writing in it. So you have to somehow the, 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 the photograph would lead into another and then give you a story. Yeah? Yeah, uh, a nice yeah. flow, nice rhythm to the book. A rhythm, like that. That's a good point, a nice rhythm to the book. You're right, because you turn over the, something. Uh, I, don't, I don't see it. This is where the editors come into their own, isn't it? But they know exactly which that's image right. should follow next. That's and right. uh, as you say, creates that story. Uh, Let's talk about... The best one, by the way. Yeah, sorry. They always take the best one. Yeah, out. exactly right. Yeah, always take the best one out, the favorite one out. Yeah. The best one out is always taken away. I don't know why. <laughs> That's the one that's safe for the uh, limited print version, though, Hengi. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to, uh, from your aspect, uh, working in uh, in Indonesia, are you you're, you are a professional photographer, or do you work uh, do do another another job? I have a nine to five job. Okay. Uh, I, I'm a videographer. That's uh, okay. that's my main job. Yeah, my nine to five. We did like a company, like a corporate profile video, we did a one or two commercials okay. or a documentary. Um, this, this is a very good uh, segue. Yeah? I mean, with film, you work about fifteen people. Yes. And in color, and sometimes you get burned out, and then you want to do something completely different. You want to yes. do something that's completely alone and in black and white. Exactly. So it's kind of you have to balance it out. So how often do you get out to to shoot uh, to do your own work? How often? Yeah, how often? Yeah. Well, uh, as long as I have time, basically, and basically when I shoot, I, I shoot a lot. Right. And I I can edit just one. Sometimes the one that I shot about five years ago, I still come back and then re-edit it again and then post it on Facebook and like that. But usually, it depends on where I go. Uh, usually, a uh, shooting video, my, my job dictate me to go outside the city. Yes, I can understand that. Yeah, so I usually stay three days longer than the rest of the crew. Yeah. And then there you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the airline ticket is free, I and mean, all I have to do is just uh, uh, pay what uh, additional accommodation. Maybe. Yeah, it's it, it's interesting that you say it that way. I'm I'm slightly different in in my business where my company builds exhibition stands, I normally get a, a day, sometimes two days, to free walk about in the city. So I can go yeah. away and do my street photography and architectural type work, which I enjoy doing. It gets me okay. away from the business. I'm still obviously in contact with the exhibitors in case okay. there's a problem, but generally uh, I'm okay and I can go and get, I can get on with my work. But I, don't, I never stay longer because once, uh, once the exhibition finishes, we've got to get back in the halls and take everything down and, and get home as quickly as possible so yeah my time is during during when uh, the show's on which is uh, it's good fun it gets me out okay. and, and i never walk about with my friends i just go off on my own yeah so yeah i mean the best way to take photograph is alone i mean you can uh, you can speak to yourself <laughs> yeah exactly right or listen, listen to some good music or a book yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. well when you meet your friend you keep talking to your friend and then you don't 
uh, concentrate on what you're doing most of exactly. the time. Yeah, yeah, it's very difficult. It's, 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 oh, just a minute, I want to take a photograph of this, and they go, oh, here he goes again. It, it doesn't work yeah. out that way, does it? it doesn't. So let, that's uh, brings us around neatly to your favorite photographer, Hengi. Ah, there's only two person. That, that would be uh, Ansel Adam and Michael Kena. That, yeah. That, that's it. Those those are the two masters that really inspired me. Yeah, and and uh, look, I, sorry, go on. If you look side by side, I think Ansel's style and uh, Michael's style is is in my photograph. Yeah, so I, I, was going, I, I, was, yeah. I was going to say that that basically, obviously, influential influences that uh, the work that you appreciate. There's the right. Michael Kenner minimalistic type uh, approach to your right. work with the with the creamy. The creamy type effect and then of course there's the ansel adams type work for his uh his high contrast work especially working in right. the, uh, yosemite park you can see those two influences That's and right. and they are and they are the two uh they're your inspirations as well or do you have someone else uh well there are some in right now i mean uh if you look at the internet oh there's, there's a lot of them there's a lot of yeah. I don't remember the name, but somehow they influenced me. But uh, from here, from there, not really one particular. But of course, I mean, there's a lot of great photographers out there, really. Yeah, it, because it, of it, the internet, now they're exposed. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the beauty of the internet, isn't it? I, I'm, I'm still a great believer in buying the book of a particular photographer rather than studying them on the internet. I, I prefer yeah. the turning of the page. What's, uh, what's your view on, uh, we'll say, uh, color? Uh, landscape work and in particular HDR work it's it's, it's okay I mean uh, to me as long as photographer deliver three things that is it has emotion and uh, it tickles your imagination and it inspire to you to do the same thing I don't really care whether you do it in color black and white digital or film I mean after after, after if it's good it's good I mean it transcends yeah. all the the, the, uh, the the technology. I mean, yeah. uh, good picture is good picture. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. So you have, to, although the predominantly your work is mono, you, you looking at other people's work. It's it's not a you're not fixed on the mono style of work for no. other photographers. No. Yeah. No. no. Yeah. No. Just as long as there's emotion. Uh, if you look at a picture, uh, at least five seconds. Yes. I think that is usually that is a good picture. Yeah. Yeah, because exactly right. after all the billion of photographs that you see in the internet in the magazine, you kind of uh, get used to it, and but only the best one will stop you right yeah. there. And break, yeah. Do you get much chance now to travel uh, away from from your home, or are you mainly uh, sort of staying in uh, Indonesia these time these days? Uh, for now, yeah. Well, uh, like in Germany. Uh, uh, I went to uh, the photo kina because yeah. uh, I want uh, has a black master 214 2014 yeah so they invite me to photo kina and I took some photograph and I also represented uh, represented by a, a gallery in Japan so when they have an exhibition I go there and then I, I took a lot of picture in, in, in that area but mostly city cityscape kind of stuff yeah yeah but most, I would say, ninety-nine percent in Indonesia. It's so easy. Yes, because it's uh, we got some beautiful countryside there and uh, some beautiful scenes, and obviously the islands where you can uh, obviously move between from island to island and uh, and and do your work that way. And most of my picture doesn't tell uh, location anyway, so my picture can happen anywhere. It's very true. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Henke, thank you so much for joining me today. We had a little bit of a hiccup on the internet link, so I'm I'm a, a bit conscious of that. But it's been great to talk to you today, and uh, good luck thank with you. your good luck with your exhibition and your uh, and your book, which is uh, which is out now. And okay. uh, we can uh, uh, hopefully some people will be interested to uh, pick up the uh, pick up the pen and and, uh, and get one of those books for, from you. Thank fascinating you. Thank you. Fa fascinating uh work that you produce and uh please continue to post it up and uh as i say thanks for joining me at such a late hour uh to talk about your life in uh, photography and uh and also your style of how you produce your work thank you thank you for having me
Thank you, Paul. That's no worries at all. Thank you. Uh, suffice to say to everyone, uh, thank you again for joining me on uh, a Photography Live and I Cut interview. Uh, where we've had uh, Hengi today talking uh, to us about his career and his photography. I hope you've enjoyed it. I really have. And I'm going to start looking into this zone system, start getting a book on that. That should be some fun. Suffice to say, if you're out this weekend and you're going to go and do some photography, um, do what I say. Leave your camera bag at home. All the best to you. Bye for now.